what I'd really like to know, Andy, is where do you find the inspiration from your real world for your novels? Well, I don't know. I may pull a Sarah Palin for a second and answer that in an oblique way. You know, one of the great things that, that thriller writers bring to our craft is that they essentially don't come out of the traditional, you know, writing MFA programs. They've all had a career. And, you know, what you see when you go to thriller conventions are ex-CIA agents, um, um, cops, you know, lawyers, doctors, money managers. Um, I actually apprenticed for writing all these books about crime by working in the women's apparel business. <laughs> and I think I am better equipped than anybody than, than for, for my profession. But, but anyway, to, to kick it off, really, you got to be very careful when you write a thriller based um, off of real events. Um, basically for a number of reasons, you know, in, in, in how long it takes for a book to come to market, those events, one might have been handled 55 different ways on television or might be totally irrelevant. Um, but, but regardless of sort of where you pull them from, ultimately what, what makes a book real and what makes a book last, you know, are, are the characters and the emotional texture that you create in it. So to me, you know, events, um, that populate my books are just the backdrop, really, for the tensions and the crises that that uh, that the characters face. So. Well, I'm I'm particularly uh, pleased to hear that because uh, I want to throw the same question out at you, Mike, and and uh, I just have this this vision of you at the surgeon's table and taking a, a winning or a losing battle in, into one of your novels. Uh, well, I'm a, uh, first of all, I'm a physician. I have my boards in internal medicine and in ER, and I've done each of those for about uh, 10 years, and um, now work uh, part-time in a program that helps sick doctors with um, mental illness, drug and alcohol problems, behavioral problems. Um, when I talk about writing, I love to talk about the, um, the order in which, uh, at least I, create uh, a thriller, and the very first thing you need uh, when you're going to create a book of the kind that we write is an idea. Um, at one point somebody had asked me uh, what it was like to write a novel, and my response was that uh, I imagine it's a little like following a recipe for rhinoceros stew that begins one. Find a rhino. <laughs> and so my biggest, when I start to work, and maybe there'll be time to talk about some of the other steps, but my biggest problem, and also the thing that's most difficult for me, is to find my rhino. And I spend a lot of time reading magazines, uh, remembering things that happened to me. Uh, I'm working on my 17th or 18th book, depending on what you count now, and uh, so I'm, I'm running out of ideas, and it takes me longer and longer to come up with a rhino uh, for my books. But that's the most important starting point, is know what you want to write about before you start. And um, so that's what I do. And Steve, I'm sure you have some thoughts on this, man. Well, uh, as, you, as you properly uh, introduced me, I'm a recovering lawyer. <laughs> um, and... And I guess the, the, what drove me, after two, after two nonfiction books, you know, you might say, well, why fiction? And, and I'll tell you the reason I'm, for this one in particular. This one is probably closer to home in some ways than my nonfiction books. Um, it is, in the end, a work of fiction, but it's, it's, a, it's a story that I, that I wanted to tell in, in the context of a legal thriller because I thought that would persuade those of you who decide to pick the book up to keep reading it. What do you think about creating recurring characters? We, I know from our discussion last night, we all have different opinions on this. Well, Reckless and the two before it all had the same character. I've actually sort of gotten bored because ultimately, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard thing to sort of pin. You know, a lot of readers like the familiarity of a character. I mean, you can name a dozen best-selling authors who literally stay within one character. And, and you know, I, clearly, as we were talking earlier, 
what's motivating people on the bestseller list today is the loyalty to people who are driven to buy that first week. It's not about, oh yeah, I read my author, and I, and I, I, you know, any month now I'll catch up on his next book. It's people who read that author in the first week, and 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 continuing characters have a way on that. As an author, I was getting bored because it's very very hard to sort of uh, resist the, the formulaic. This formulaity, formulate, whatever. You know. <laughs> um, when 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 you're when you're one um, for the most part driven to a location and and seeing the world behind one person who usually is a crime solver who so, transforms, who develops over time. Well, even still, but, but so so my next two books, one coming out in July and one for next year, are now standalones, and I, I actually love the process of doing it a lot more. Um, and I also love the idea of writing in the first person, which I'm doing in three books I do not. So some of it is, is more, uh, you know, is, is for my own benefit as well, more than it is even for the publishers who have encouraged me to stay in this character. <laughs> How about you, Mike? Um, I see you nodding your head. It's a good answer, too. No, that what you said. Um, I think to answer this question properly in a way requires an understanding of exactly what what a thriller or a suspense novel is, as opposed to, say, a detective novel. Um, I would say that all detective novels are thrillers, but not necessarily all suspense novels are detective novels. And if you want a, a pattern of the books that, that I've written through my first um, 17, all of which are, or each of which are a standalone, um, it's that... Uh, the main characters in my book are normal everyday people. They're all doctors, but in that regard are still normal in that what they want out of life is exactly the same as what all of you want out of life and what I want out of life, and that's simply to be happy. They have a life, they're bright, they've, they've done some decent things with their world, and all they want to do is get up in the morning, uh, have love in their life, go to a, a, a job that they enjoy, and... Um, and grow as a person, but because of something that they know, or something that they've seen, or something that they've done, or something that happens to them, they're not going to be allowed to do it. I'm not going to let them do it. And, um, and what exists uh, during this process uh, is what we call the plot. And the plot, if you want an image uh, to go by, uh, you can picture a, uh, a cannibal's cauldron big black pot simmering and that pot, the pot is the plot and the pot's been simmering for a day or it's been simmering for a week or it's been simmering for a century or it's been simmering for four centuries but whatever it is it's bubbling there and then along comes the author picks up this character that we're talking about drops him or her into the pot and the pot starts to boil over and there's no way for the character to get out of the plot except through, somehow destroying that pot. And so basically that's where, um, where I draw on my um, suspense novels. If I didn't write the kind of novels, let's just say, speaking from a medical standpoint, um, I, I, write about, I might write about a doctor working in the ER and in comes a patient covered with big blue lumps all over their body and the doctor becomes desperate to find out what the heck happened to this patient and goes on a mission to find out where these lumps are coming from. Well, that's fine. That's a detective story. And my character then becomes a detective. But in my books, the way I write them, the doctor who works in the ER would start to develop the blue lumps. And that's the best example I can give you of the difference. I am trying now to write a character that I think could be an ongoing character, but we'll have to see. So, I'm looking at the crowd right now, and I may need a little help putting a fine point on this question, uh, but we're going to move from reoccurring characters to sex. All right. So you look up here, there are four guys, all right? and I'm looking out there, and this is not the crowd that I expect. I thought 75% of the people in the crowd would be women. Are we handicapped by being guys?